What is up, boyos? Welcome to Last Week in Games, where everything is video games. Last week, Cyberpunk launched. How about that for the PS5? Uh, Wii U and Nintendo 3DS eShop is uh, dying. S see you later. And uh, some other stuff happened as well. My name is Jake. That over there next to me is Nick. Uh, uh, Jay Sapon. Oh, just Jay? Yeah. Uh, how, how you doing, Nick? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, Jay Leno. Um, I'm doing fine. I got a haircut. Uh, Looking good. Haircut, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do just that. And I went in to shave my head, and they're like, no, you can't do that. Your head is, your hair is too precious. And I said, too precious. All right. Yeah. It's my hair. My hair is very young. It's very young hair, very innocent. And it didn't hurt nobody. So people don't like chopping it up. Gotcha. Yeah. They that's, don't. that's fair. And it's child I'll, endangerment. I'll see your head shape is, it's too weird. It's, it is weird. I look like a fucking melon that got smashed into three. And then they put it back together with like a sewing needle and shit. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's stra bad. strangely lumpy that head of yours. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. it's, and it's and it's like it's it's like consistent. It's not like oh, I've got a lump here and a lump here. No, it's like a wave, but it's like consistent all the way through my head. Yeah, and yeah. So it's very weird. Like a profile. If I were to profile you, it would be like a fucking cheese grater or a washboard. It's, it's like you, um you don't want to see it on the Incredicoaster at uh, California Adventure. There's that section where it goes up and down and up and down on the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. That's how yep. your your head is actually. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. So about so, the same size too. So like right now your hair looks the same length, but actually like sections of it are a lot shorter than others just to fill in the gaps. Fill, yeah, for yeah. sure. And my <laughs> it, luckily my hair is really thick, so it you know fills in those gaps. Yeah, yeah. Um, if Thank I had God thin for hair, that. you you would it would just be it would be a mess. Yeah, it'd be a mess. I look like a fucking. Actually, a lot of people don't know this about you, Nick, hair. but you actually don't even have hair. You're actually wearing a toupee right now. Well, I mean, it it is hair. It's real hair. Right. But it's you know it's it is yeah it's a toupee that's filled in <laughs> right. with plumber putty. But yeah, yeah, totally. We won't, that's we're, that's not what this is about, right? <laughs> Everything we, is video not, games. It it is. Uh, what you been playing, Nick? What you been playing? I've not been playing anything new. I'm sticking to the to the thing. I'm out of money. Um, I'm running my debt up. So I've been playing Monster Hunter Rise, which we've gone over. Uh, I'm in the end game and uh, just grinding for uh, decorations. And Ollie Ollie World, still pretty good. It's lacking something, and I can't tell what it is just quite yet. Um. I don't I don't think like the, the tracks are too short or something like that. It's a lacking something, but I can't put my finger on it just yet. Um, and I've also been playing a little bit of Lost Ark and I've kind of fallen out of that one. Kind of boring. And I don't understand why people play MMOs when <laughs> you have to like, you know, grind through that whole first intro section where it's like you don't have any of your abilities and you're fighting these shitty things and it's all just fetch quests i'm like i that's the one thing about this game that i didn't want to do I'll give me the dungeons give me the co-op give me the stuff like that but yeah I, I haven't gotten there yet so it's it's uninteresting so i've kind of put that on a back burner but that's about it what have you been playing uh a lot actually first of yeah. all Should first I, of I, all i wish i was in your shoes yeah there's that there's a lot of stuff to play dude and you know what nick Last year, I couldn't really be part of like the game of the year contender conversation, right? Because I had only played a couple of those games. Right. And my intention this year is to play enough games where I can definitively say, like, this is what I think the game of the year is. Is it going to cost me a million gazillion dollars? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it worth it? Probably not. Well, we'll see when we get there. It Probably not. But, you know. Does it make me feel good? I don't know. We'll see at the end of the year. But that this year I want to do it. Maybe next year I won't go as hard in the paint. I kind of like that. And I, I can I tweak that for myself a little bit? Yeah. Every month 
you buy the best uh rated video game like the highest uh critic rating video game of that month and play that the month after it comes out like this month's gonna be hard because you know fucking elden ring um horizon ollie ollie world sifu all of those are getting real good scores yeah so like I feel like I feel like Horizon and Elden Ring are going to be in the running for that. You know, yeah, those those are the two game of the year stuff sort of thing. So maybe you double dip on this month, and then when the slower month is, then it's like, all right, well. Yeah, I plan on like you know, I I I know for sure like there's going to be some slower months where I can like kind of fill in the gaps, maybe play Sifu, maybe play Ali Ali World, but um, as far as what I've been playing right now, first of all, I want to start with Uncharted. I saw the Uncharted movie. Uh, it was cool. It's all right. Nice. It's fine. You should go watch my review. Anyone that's listening, yeah. uh, car review. It, it was lame, dude. Honestly, <laughs> the more I think about it, the more I'm like, it was close to being something good, but it was really just Mark Wahlberg just being like, Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Mark Wahlberg. Hey, you know, just doing his Mark Wahlberg thing. It's just, uh, uh it's unfortunate. It, it really is unfortunate. Um, but as far as video, have any other character? Yeah, like, that's sh- Mark Wahlberg just plays Mark Wahlberg the same. So, but it's it sucks that Ryan Reynolds can get away with playing Ryan Reynolds because he is just more interesting. He's got yeah. a more funny personality. But then you get Mark Wahlberg, and you're like, dude, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, I do not like that guy. He's been in a couple good movies, you know. Uh, Almost Famous, it's a classic. That was him, right? He's almost famous. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, or was it Rockstar? What was the movie with him? It was like I don't fucking know, where he man. was like in this Mark Wahlberg. Movies. He was like in this like heavy metal band, and then like this heavy metal band he looked up to like pulled him up on stage, and then he became like the new lead singer of that band, and it's a, it's a pretty okay movie. He was in Shooter. He was good in Shooter. I liked him in that. Um, Wahlberg, Rockstar. Boogie Nights is what you're talking oh, about. It was it was literally called Rockstar. Yeah. I'm not even seeing that. Mark Mark Wahlberg, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Um, Almost Famous is a great movie too. That's a totally different movie. That's that's the movie where yeah, doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, Uncharted movie. It's okay. I'd wait for video. Uh, that's that's my final my final answer. Uh, do you think do you think it'll be on uh, on like a streaming service? Or are you gonna have to buy it physically? It's weird. It's a Sony movie, so like I, know. I don't know where Sony puts their movies. It seems like they're still one of the guys that just sort of sells it out to different people. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. It's maybe, crazy. Maybe Hulu. Who knows? Netflix, maybe. Who knows? Maybe nothing. I don't know. Uh, maybe I fe- nothing. Maybe I feel it like comes straight to DVD. Not I even feel Blu-ray, like it's just DVD. It's too big of a budget of a movie for them to not like sell it to some streaming service. You right. know? Right. Uh, I wish I want them to do that. That we don't have to pay for sh- pay for that shit. You know? Yeah. But I, I'm I'm wondering if they're gonna make a sequel. I'm very curious. I have no idea. They're like they set it up for a sequel. I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I also beat Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, uh, the video game, uh-huh. How was uh huh, that? for the PS5, and uh, I love the story, dude. I think this story is one of the best. I'm I'm gonna say it. it's one of the best video game stories in all of video games. Straight up, it's a great video game story. I really loved it. I loved all the characters. Uh, even Mantis, I thought was great, but her voice actor was annoying. So that, that kind of grated on me. And I don't even think, I don't know. It was weird. The voice actor, not great, but I still liked all the lines that she said. Um, and I love this story. I love, cause it's, you know, it's a lot like the movies where it's like they grow to love each other. And by the end they're, they're a family and it's, it's right. sweet it's heartwarming and yeah, it's great. Also one of the greatest like fake out endings 
literally you could go back and watch my stream vod because uh, i streamed the ending of it but like it ends the credits start rolling and i'm like that is the lamest ending and then they're talking to adam warlock bit of a spoiler here and then adam warlock turns into this like big creature at the end right in the middle of the credits and it's like okay i like it we get a, another boss battle right right in the middle of nice. the credits nice. it's cool that is cool great great fake out ending it was really just the combat though the combat was sort of meh it looked mm. meh it was it was fun at first like you get into it and you're like ah this is this is interesting what it felt like was they went into the game with a full ass story they knew exactly what they were going to do with their story but they didn't have enough time to finish the game like the actual gameplay elements of it like they had to rush this shit out is what it felt like like this was an unfinished game um it almost felt like a dlc to a game uh really with, with how like minimal the mechanics are So, like, each one of your characters has upgrades, but they each only have four upgrades each. And, like, or three upgrades each. So, like, halfway through the game, you have all the upgrades. And you're just like, okay, cool. And then there's, like, I don't know, 20 upgrades for for, uh, Star-Lord. And you're just kind of like, okay, it's just uninter- uninteresting um, like, leveling up. Yeah, yeah. Progression, uninteresting progression. The leveling's uninteresting. The combat is really easy. Because uh, it, it uses the same sort of combat style as Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, it's okay. that same sort of thing. Only mm-hmm. in Final Fantasy VII Remake, a lot of it is you slashing and dashing. You know, you got to right. slash and dash. And then... If you want to do a ranged attack, you have to use Barrett or whatever. You have to use one of those other characters. Right. Since you're Star-Lord and you have guns, you can literally just stay in a corner and shoot some stuff and then, like, send Gamora, send Drax to do your stuff, and you never get hit. You know? Like, mm, yeah. I had to raise the difficulty because it was so easy, and I put it on the hardest difficulty, and it was a cakewalk throughout uh, the whole game. And I suck at games. That's a bummer. Yeah, it's a very fun game though. Like regardless, it's so cool and like some of the set pieces are like nice to look at. Walking through nowhere was really cool and yeah, all the characters are great. Are there like open world segments or is it pretty much all on rails? It it's pretty linear. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty linear, which I was okay with. You know, right. like there's so many games that feel like they have to be open world. You don't have right. to have an open world game. That's what I liked about this game, actually. It was like, yeah, it's just a linear ass game, which is fine. And it's yeah. chapters, you know. Yeah, it was it was cool. I liked it. I liked it. Uh cool. but yeah. It's mid. Mid game. But mid middling. Very mid. middling game. Yeah. Pretty good. But I've also been playing Horizon Forbidden West. Mm. Which yeah. just came out last week. Uh-huh. And I'm hearing great things about this game. Yeah, I'm about four hours in, so not super far, you know. Um, That's a decent chunk, though. Yeah, it got me through like the intro area right into like the beginning of the open world. I like just did my tall walk, my first tall walker, you know. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, so far I like it. It's very pretty. Uh, it's kind of more horizon, but with like much better, uh, traversal. The traversal is way, oh, way that's better. Good. That is um, good. yeah, I like the traversal a lot. There was you one section. To, go ahead. You still have to carry around your, uh, your knapsacks and your sleeping bags. You got it. You got to carry around your knapsacks and your sleeping bags. But the, the nice thing that they added in this game is now Aloy has a stash so if you pick something like up like a mustache no right. like if you um if you pick up something and you're out of space in your satchel uh uh-huh. it, it will go to your stash so you can oh, pick stuff nice. up from your stash which is nice that's nice and also like i remember from the first game i don't know if it's going to be the case in this one but like there was an upgrade in the in the first game where it was like unlimited fast travels uh-huh uh, yep so I, I'm pretty sure that's in this game. And um, from what I remember, you get that pretty early. So you then can. you just have you unlimited have to, fucking sleeping bags. You had to seek it out, but like, right. eh, you know, whatever. 
Yeah. Um, but I honestly didn't mind in the first game, just sort of running around anyway. Uh, and this game's traversal is much better as well because it sort of added a Zelda Breath of the Wild hang glider sort of deal, which makes traversing around ter- the the terrain really fun and just let me just jump off this tall neck and just glide fly where fly wherever i want glide forever yeah i like that the story i'm loving so far um i like that so like in the first game you know aloy is nobody you know she's a nobody Mm -hmm. that turns out to be someone very important Uh, somebody yeah if you haven't played the game go play it it's very cool cool story uh, but she's very important in the first game and she like ends up saving the town. I won't spoil like exactly what happens, but like in this game, you know, all that stuff has happened. So now she's almost royalty and everyone treats oh. her like that. You know, everyone's like, Hey, you're the savior. Like, wow. She even wears like a little crown thing because people just like respect her so much. And she's like a little bit more sassy in this game. And like, yeah, I- I'm kind of like digging that they carried it over. They, it wasn't just like, let's reset and do it again. Uh, it's like, right yeah it's like a continuation you know more so than a lot of games do a lot of games are like you were a lame loser in the first game and you accomplished so much and now you're a lame loser again yeah now you've lost everything and do it again yeah that kind of happened in the in the psychonauts game that that came out last year where it was like you were a lame loser in the first game and you like helped you know figure Mm -hmm. stuff out and then in the second game it's like okay you're still a lame loser you're you're still yeah working the office job and yeah no no, nobody really no hate towards uh psychonauts it's a great game but like yeah i like that this continues through and it's like a through line and it seems like they had a plan more of a plan than star wars had for the star wars trilogy um that's true (laughs) um but yeah i'm liking it though the one thing that like blew my mind though nick was mm-hmm. when I opened up the progression tree, the skill tree. Uh-huh. That is a crazy skill tree. There's a lot that- going on in that skill tree, and I'm all about it. I am so ready to level up that skill tree. There's a okay. lot of things to unlock and a lot of perks and a lot of different abilities and upgrades. Yeah, I'm I'm all about it. This game is awesome so far. I also got to play around with the uh, resolution and performance mode. Uh, and in resolution mode, it does look great, but it is pretty framey, like oh, really okay. framey. Um, and that's also because like I take off motion blur and stuff, you know, so right. yeah. there's no there's no getting away from it. Um, but in performance mode, dude, silky smooth, baby. It's silky smooth. It's beautiful. I don't know how anyone else. I don't know how anyone plays it in resolution mode because it is. It's rough. It's rough. Maybe you get used to it, but yeah, it's it's pretty rough. I'm sure after playing it in a silky smooth 60, because when I was playing Spider-Man and I was playing on the 60 frames, and it's like, well, I want to see what these 4K uh, ray tracing things are, are about. So I switched it over and I'm like, ooh, ooh, it is. It's chugging. Yeah. But then you switch back and you're like, oh, yeah, I'd take the movement over the the visuals. Same. Um, but also it's one of those things where it's like if the other didn't exist, right? Like if the performance mode didn't exist and it was only resolution, we'd probably all just like, you know, get used to the weird. We'd live with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how it was although, with control, right? Like we all just kind of got used to it. Yeah. And dealt with it. Although with that kind of open world kind of game i'm sure a lot of similarities and uh comparisons to assassin's creed games would pop up because that that is a one of those very like jumpy glitchy you know choppy games that doesn't look very pretty yeah but playing playing this game on performance mode it's not that bad or right. not performance mode resolution mode oh. you know the little bit i did fuck around with it it wasn't that bad it was just sort of like Framey, just a little framey. Yeah. It's just, you, know? you noticed it, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, should we move on to the titties? Let's fucking get through it. Let's do it. Let's do, do it, baby. Let's hold Bib it. boy. Hold the the... Oh, I can't. I can't. Hold on. That's uh, other side. Other That's side. The wrong way. There we go. Here we go. Let me, let me hold your hand. How's that? Does That's, that work? It's kind of weird, but. <laughs> 
holding, <laughs> holding your hand through the. That is if weird. If you if you're an audio that. listener, you're like what? Uh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no one's listening anyway. Anyway, we, we just held hands. Yeah, that's we all did. It was through our yeah, we through teleported internet, our hands through technology. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. It'd be crazy if I just stuck my hand out and like my hand came through. <laughs> just like popped through. <laughs> That'd be cool, man. We need that technology. I would love to fucking teleport to work instead of okay. driving. Portals? Jesus. Yeah, dude. I hate driving. Anyway, titties. These are the, some tidbits of news uh, that we want to talk about. Uh, first and foremost, Kingdom Hearts fans say the Switch cloud ports are fucking terrible, Nick. Have you seen this? I haven't seen it. I've heard it. I've heard it a lot. I heard it last week, too. Um people just well this was last said, week yes. like you you well yeah but uh <laughs> people are like yo you can't fucking play this there's no way there's no way we can play this game it doesn't work it does not work so yeah i've heard it's literally unplayable and mm-hmm. hard to get refunds and stuff and like it's it's becoming an issue uh yeah, yeah hilarious um just thought it was worth mentioning don't buy the kingdom hearts games for cloud on the switch which it's unfortunate, man. It, well, we could get into that if you want. Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Just don't do it. Just don't do don't it. Don't do it. It's not. It's they're not good. They're not good. What are you six? Like, yeah. come on. Why? Why is Kingdom Hearts so complicated? It's got Goofy in it. Like, yeah. why is the storyline so com? It's fucking Goofy, dude. The yeah. goof. The goofster himself. It's got Mickle's Mouses, you know? Yep. And he's an edge lord. Yeah. <laughs> just don't just don't play. Just don't play Kingdom Hearts. Did somebody say Lord of Darkness? Uh, un- unless you're <laughs> a, a child living in 2008, do not play Kingdom Hearts. That's it's bad. It's I really bad. tried. I tried one time. I was just like, why why? Why is this a thing? This is so mm-hmm. fucking weird. Uh Platinum Games bosses at Sushi Inaba and Hideki Kamiya say NFTs suck. Uh, th- there was actually a whole interview they did with, uh, I think it was Info Gadget. Uh, and it's actually, I-, I would say, like, if you get some time, go and read that whole article because they actually talk about some really interesting stuff in there, like what what it's like making games and what it's like. But the, the interesting thing was them talking about how the, they don't plan on fucking with NFTs ever and uh, unless the technology like really gets figured out, but they're like, we doubt it. And they're also, they also kind of like, we're like, yeah, it, it makes sense Konami would want to do something like that. Or no, it was Namco, I think they were talking about. And they're like, yeah, it makes sense because they're sleaze balls and they just want to make money or whatever. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Platinum's per- usually pretty good. Yeah. About just doing doing them. They're like, we don't need to do anything unnecessary. They their games hardly have DLCs. Even they're just like they tell a story, they put out a game, playable, move on to the next thing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I I appreciate Platinum. They also talked about in this this article about how um, you know, a lot of companies don't think about the fun aspect of games they just think about the profit of the games and uh yeah that's something we've we've talked about on this very channel before where it's just you think about like almost like games are developed now around a a way to make money before you actually think of what the game is which it should be the other way around like it should be like we make a game now how do we make money on this game Rather than we have this system to make money, how do we make a game around it? Let's let's put a game. Let's put a, a popular IP such as Star Wars or Marvel behind right. it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's what Marvel Avengers was. It was literally just, hey, here's our idea for making money. Let's let's slap throw Marvel a on sort there. of working game together, and uh, call it good. Very true. I feel like Anthem was the same exact thing. Uh, not that they used a, an IP, but it was more like, we have this system, we want to make a game like that. And then they designed the game around that Destiny mm-hmm. model rather than... I think Destiny is a very big one to do that because people go, let's make a Destiny clone. 
then that's the starting point is like they're making a lot of money doing what they do let's do that and then they're like well what are we gonna do with it and then they just kind of slap skin on bones and not think about the meat that needs to go into the well and the body as well i think it works so well for destiny because destiny built their game and as they were building their game they were figuring out these systems right like they built the game and the systems at the same time rather than putting the system putting the game around the systems you know what i mean and i remember with destiny one like they were figuring that shit out like it was kind of a a process into destiny 2 where they are now where they kind of have it all figured out um debatably (laughs) <laughs> but you know well, yeah apparently they're doing real good and people are excited for the new thing that's coming out it just came out right or it comes out this so week pretty soon. this week i think yeah this week yeah. um yeah and that's something i gotta give up i gotta give it up to nintendo the, the boys because they've always just been like we're making a game you know like we just want to make a fun game and that's always been their model has always been just let's make a fun game. You're making a face like you disagree. I can't think of a games as service Nintendo game. Can you think of a division type Nintendo oh, game? I see what they're saying. <laughs> like their games no, are I just can... like, we're going to polish it and we want it to be fun. That's, that's the whole idea. We're going to redo it, but not redo it. We're just going to put the same old shit out and, slap a sticker on it and sell it again how, how do you how do you figure that what do you mean well freaking um the assassin's creed Ezio collection is literally just that's not Wii. nintendo though that's a third party on the nintendo system oh well fuck you all right i'm just talking nintendo as a developer Developers, like as okay. a publisher of games yeah as as a developer i gotcha fern fine you win you win i don't like nintendo they can fuck right off <laughs> Um, come at me, prove me wrong. Uh, Tell me something good. Mario Kart. Send strikers at me. Come on. Smash Bros. Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> Zelda. That's a bad game. Mario Odyssey. Splatoon. Okay. Uh huh. Mhm. 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 All right. Well, I'll I'll love it when I see it. <laughs> love it when I see it. Uh, Capcom <laughs> countdown was for street fighter last week nick we talked about how there was this countdown on the capcom website and you were wrong about i was totally wrong dude you were wrong about it totally wrong you were wrong too yeah but i was very very wrong yeah uh well i think i got my companies mixed up no you didn't yeah yeah, yeah, because you're like, what? What's the ca- countdown gonna be for? Oh, said, you said Kirby. It's gonna be. For, it's. I said what? Kirby. No, no, I said something else that wasn't made by Capcom, and you're like, that's Sonic. That's Sonic. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Sonic. A Sega game, and I'm like, oh, sorry, Sonic Kirby. You know what's the difference? It's the same shit. But you also said uh, Marvel versus Capcom. Yeah. Which yeah. is not far off from Street Fighter. It isn't. I guess I was closer in that second guess. Yeah, but that is more hype than Street Fighter. I'm going to be honest. That would be way I, more hype than Street Fighter. 100%. 100%. I said Resident Evil. I would say that's like equal levels of hype for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the the shitty thing about this countdown is like they had this fucking countdown. Yep. And then they're like, Street Fighter 6. We'll have more details in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a countdown to announce something. It's a countdown to a countdown. Yep. The a countdown to a less of a countdown. It's like, like why? Like, why not just count down to, to the actual like thing that you're going to show? Yeah. Like here's a countdown. Just don't say anything. Like, when this countdown fuck? ends, we'll show you Street Fighter Six. Not when this countdown ends, we'll just confuse you and, and say that something's coming out soon. Like that that is so dumb. That is so dumb. Yeah, it makes no sense at all. It's like when when you tell your uh, smart speaker to like set a timer. Hey, can you set a timer for this for 30 minutes? And it's like, all right, in 30 minutes, I'll tell you to that your timer is going to go off soon. You know, it's like, that's great. Yeah, cool. yeah. It's dumb. It's yeah. Dumb. Capcom dumb. You have any, uh, dumb. any excitement for Street Fighter? Nope. 
I hate Street Fighter. <laughs> Always hated Street Fighter. I feel like it is the slowest fighting game out there. Um, it is so you're you're stuck. It is so you're the ground is glue, and it's all jabs. Um, I don't like that kind of. What about the the Hidoken? Okay. So you go hit Hogan, hit Hogan, hit Hogan, hit Hogan, yeah. like 12 times, and that's your fighting style. So dumb. So dumb. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the new stuff because I haven't. They haven't I don't said like anything. Street Fighter, but I mean, Street Fighter 5. I've oh. seen some things, and like some animations are really cool, but from what I have seen about it, it still looks very muddy and pokey. And that's, I don't, I'm not in, I'm not into it. I don't care. I don't give a shit. Capcom versus Marvel would be way better. Um, yeah. So people care about this, right? There's a whole community where Street Fighter's like, th there's a whole Evo thing where it's people just go crazy about who wins the Street Fighter tournament, but not me. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the battle is always between Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Like those are the two. Also, also very muddy and pokey. Yeah, but at least there's finishers in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Makes it look cool. Yeah. And there's like yeah. uh, a couple like really shitty movies. <laughs> yeah. But I also don't like the character design in Street Fighter at all. They're just like they're, big beefy dudes. They're big beefy men and women and they they're wearing cloth and they punch each other. I don't know. I don't know, man. Give me some interesting characters like Yoshimitsu and fucking um, yeah, I've always been, been a Tekken stan. Tekken's good. Freaking Dead or Alive, Soul Calibur, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, like those are all good. But yeah, I'm not gonna pretend to be like a fucking fighting game stan, but uh, no, Street you're Fighter, a fighting game. you're a fighting game, Jake. I'm a yeah, not a. I'm a fighting game Jake, not a Stan. Uh, looking at character models from for Laura, I really like her. She's got big boobs, and that's cool, you know. And and what, what Street Fighter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just looked up Street Fighter Five characters. <laughs> that was the first one to come up. So there's there's that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know Street Fighter Five. It's been what six years since the last one. So it's about time for another one. I remember that the, the launch of Street Fighter V was sort of uh, botched, I remember. Like, people weren't happy with it for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. I vaguely follow the fighting community. I watch Evo every year, typically. So, like, I that's kind of my knowledge, you know, of it. Yeah. It's just, like, Evo yeah. once a year. Um, so, like, I remember, yeah, Street Fighter, not that hype, but it seemed like a game that they sort of redeemed over time somehow i don't know they like balanced the characters yeah. or something i don't know so, yeah i don't i don't know so i wonder if this is going to be the same with street fighter 6 if it's going to be a clusterfuck when it comes out or if they like took notes and they're like nah we got this yeah i yeah. don't i don't know i don't like street fighter okay but that's all i gotta say let's move on i'm uh, sick of talking about it Final Titty, which will lead into our first news story as well. Uh, Cyberpunk PS5 is finally launched. They had a an event on Wednesday last week. I think it was Wednesday. Um, and at that event, they're just like, hey, PS5 version is out. Uh, how do you feel about that? That sort of launch like that. They, they also released like a five hour demo as well. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I love it. Uh, I love it so much that I re-downloaded um, Cyberpunk, played a little bit of it, and I didn't really notice a difference yet. Um, I only pretty much got through the intro, so I haven't really gotten to the open world or like the the car movements because I know that was the thing that they said that they fixed was like vehicles and interactions with AI. Haven't really ran into that, but. I mean, it doesn't look better. The character customization still sucks ass. Apparently they um, added stuff to that as well. but I don't They know. added like hair colors, but not a whole lot of them. Um, yeah, 
I don't know. They did a couple of things that I've noticed, and uh, I'm not impressed. And I, I kind of want to play it on PC because I hear PC is still like 10 times better. Than, it always will be, yeah. Than what, For most what it is right now. So it's cool. I'm glad that they're actually doing something, and this just means that the Witcher PS5 is around the corner. So Definitely. That's that's what I'm more hyped about. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think like launching it that day, smart move, don't announce a date, just do it. Um, and also launching it right now is kind of a good time for it, I think, because it, it can be, um, like alternate, like, like if, you know, we talk a lot about Horizon and Elden Ring coming out and how these are going to be the games that are going to dominate or whatever, but there's going to be a huge amount of people like yourself that like just can't afford to buy a game or don't want to waste their money on a, on a new game and maybe bought cyberpunk last year and have been sitting on it. So it's like kind of good, uh, counter programming, I guess. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? To, to those big tentpole games coming out for sure. Yeah. Especially it, it just gives you something to play. Because for me, I've got I'm sitting on Ollie Ollie World and a and Cyberpunk, and it's like, if the PlayStation Five is open, I'll play Cyberpunk. If uh, you know the fiance is using the TV, then I'll come in here and play Ollie Ollie World. So it's it's nice to have that kind of balance. Um, but yeah, it's it is a good time for it to come out, and I think there are going to be people they're like oh it's you know it's on sale let's pick this up instead of this other thing i hear good things or i've heard a lot of things about this let's pick this up and then they're like all right good good yeah and it's also like one of those things where if it launches right now and people don't like it it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle of everything else going on yep exactly Uh, which leads us right into our first news story here nick Mm-hmm. I Cy- know what it is. Cyberpunk 2077 is totally bro- broken for PS4 disc owners. This comes from Jeremy Winslow at Kotaku. Cyberpunk 2077's next-gen version fi- finally launched this week after months of delays. It's pretty good if you're on PlayStation 5, particularly because the haptics, but the re-release also addressed a myriad of bugs and its massive 50 gigabyte patch. Not everyone is enjoying the new update, though, as PlayStation 4 owners report the physical disc version of the game is totally busted. Developer CD Projekt Red dropped patch 1.5 on Tuesday, which introduced additions like new cosmetics for V and improvements such as tweaking NPC AI so that they're a bit smarter. Uh, The game's still missing some rather necessary content, including New Game Plus mode, but Cyberpunk 2077's next-gen launch pushes the game closer to the state it should have been in at release. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, while fixing some things, CD Projekt Red seems to have broken other things, including the PS4 disc version. According to users all over the internet, from Twitter to the developer's official forum pages, the physical version of Cyberpunk 2077's on everything. Oh, on every iteration of the PS4 continuously brings up launch errors. PS4 owners who have installed patch 1.5 say they've encountered corrupted data messages when attempting to start the game with the nearly 10 year old system, making the delete the application, making them or sorry, let me try that again with the nearly 10 year old system asking them to delete application insert the disc again and reinstall the game however the series of steps doesn't appear to fix the startup problems um nick yes how does this make you feel <laughs> like we're in a counseling session how does eh. this make you feel eh eh Eh. No, like I, I, I just didn't want to give you like anything on that one. How does this make you feel? Uh, eh. I don't want to talk All about right, it. Moving on. Um, <laughs> no, I mean it's shitty. It it's shitty because I've seen both sides of this argument, and one side is, well, it's a PS5 update, so why are you playing this game on PS4? Sort of thing. Why are you playing the update on PS4? And the way that it's set that. The way that this article is making it sound like is like there's no choice. You know, this update just comes up and it's like, 
you want to update cyberpunk and people are like yeah sure why not and then it just bricks their game so you know people who haven't gotten a ps5 yet want to play cyberpunk are not able to do it anymore because it just bricked their cd um however i do kind of see towards the other side like why the fuck would cyber would cd project red even touch the playstation 4 like i i get releasing a big update for a new console but why put that update on the playstation 4 as well i feel like they're limiting themselves by going you can have this update as well it won't run and obviously it doesn't run but you know you'll have it because we're trying to be fair to all consoles and that is the biggest disappointment for cyberpunk that it's just been the bane of its existence is the need to please every single owner of every console um they're just they're reaching their arms too too long into everything else it's like ps4 going to be that way that's it like you should focus on that if you're going to focus on that and then focus on PlayStation 5 update if you're going to focus on that don't release them at the same time it just doesn't make any sense to do that what do you think yeah i think it's kind of shitty like you know i know this was the PS5 launch right but like mm-hmm. i i think what a lot of people who bought it for PS4 were hoping like oh when they drop the PS5 update, they'll probably fix a lot of bugs that are breaking right. on my right. PS4. Mm-hmm. Yep. And this and kind of what it should be. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think it should be too. And like the main thing is, this game was announced when the PS5 wasn't even a thing. You know, like this game was announced for PS4, yep. and it should have been a priority from the very beginning to get this thing to yep. run on PS4, um, or just not release it there at all. Uh, and this just kind of proves that it won't ever, it won't ever be that way. And, um, yeah, I, I think the, the other interesting thing that this does is it kind of takes the conversation away from like how the actual game is. Cause like the one thing I never hear anyone talk about with this game is what, what is is this game actually good or or not like underneath all the bugs right it, it's a conversation you rarely hear and um yeah to me it seems like it, it's a game that's just not good even underneath all this shit well, but uh, I, like, I like what you said about like it was announced for playstation 4 so that should be the priority and i agree with that like i wholeheartedly agree on board with that and uh yeah that's what they should focus on. I'm going to I'm going to backpedal here and say they should focus entirely on the PlayStation 4 because it was announced for that. That was what it's supposed to release on is those last gen consoles. Make that the best experience you can make it and then move forward on that. Just be like, "Okay, we're done with the PlayStation 4. We're going to up-res it to the PlayStation 5. This is the PlayStation 5 version." Like that's what it should be, right? Like two, three years down the road, like, oh yeah, you remember Cyberpunk on a PlayStation 4? It was also you could play it on PlayStation 5, but now it's even better. We got ray tracing, we got this, we got this, we got this. Because they focused. I feel I've like I said, I feel like they have their arms spread too thin. They're it, they're double dipping in everything, and their all their teams are spread so thin on everything that they're doing that uh it's just kind of it's not as explosive as it could be these releases. Yeah. Well, I've said it once. I've said it a million times, Nick, this game was never going to be good because a cyberpunk game where you can't see your character. What are you doing? Why is this game first person? What the fuck are they thinking? That is, that's the the biggest issue with this game for me. And it's the uh, biggest issue ever since they, they showed the first trailer for it where it was first person gameplay. I was like, I don't even care. I don't even like this yep. game. I don't even yep. want to play this game. This is stupid. Yep. Why I is it first to, person? I wanted to support them so bad. It's the Witcher guys. Like it's the Witcher. What guys. do they do? They and make it a first Witcher, person game. Got the Witcher so wrong at the beginning, fixed it within a year. And then it was like, shit, this is the best game ever that ever came out. And now it's like, they're doing the same shit with a different team. 
and it's it's not getting any better like they're they're bandaging up a dam with fucking twigs and the twigs are just fucking shooting back at their eyes it's it's kind of ridiculous um yeah i'm i'm kind of sick of it but i want to i want it to i want it to be good i really do want it to be the witcher 3 again two years from now you know just like damn i picked up the i picked up cyberpunk 2077 and it's fucking fantastic it blew me out of the water um but i don't know if it'll ever it'll ever live up to the predecessors of witcher well that that's yeah. what i'm saying is like even if they fixed everything that was wrong with this game is it is it a game that's good you know underneath yeah. all that i i don't know yeah i really I don't, don't know either. It's not like The Witcher where there was a... Yeah, I don't know either. I didn't play it either because it just barely ran on the pro. It, it didn't pro. work, yeah. So yeah. Um, anyway, let's let's move on to the next piece of news here. Uh, Wii U and Nintendo 3DS eShops discontinuation. Uh, this comes from the Nintendo customer support page. Uh, as of late March 2023, it will no longer be possible to make purchases in Nintendo eShop for the Wii U system and the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. It will also no longer be possible to download free content, including game demos. Furthermore, as this date draws closer, related services will cease to function. As of May 23rd, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use a credit card to add funds to an account in a Nintendo eShop on Wii U or the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. As of August 29th, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use a Nintendo eShop card to add funds to an account in Nintendo eShop on Wii U or the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. However, it will be possible to redeem download codes until late March 2023. Uh, The changes to Nintendo eShop on Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS family of systems will simultaneously take effect in software on these platforms where it is possible to make purchases such as Street Pass Me Plaza, Theme Shop, and Nintendo Badge Arcade. Even after late March 2023, and for the foreseeable future, it will still be possible to re-download games and DLC, receive software updates, and enjoy online play on Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. Um, yeah, um... It's kind of weird to me <laughs> that they're they're closing down you know like no i i, I mean I it makes know. like it makes it's, sense it's still i guess a year but... away, right because that's we're in 2022 it's still a year away oh no yeah As but they're may they're gonna start yeah you yeah, can't add funds starting... anymore in 2023 or in like two months right so I don't know, man. They're old systems, especially the Wii U. Like, nobody bought the Wii U. There's obviously no yeah. market for it. Yeah. Um, as for the 3DS, that sucks. But honestly, who, who's still playing the 3DS? I, I could see, like, a kid who isn't as um, lucky or privileged to have a Switch, you know, get a hand-me-down 3DS. But also, like, those kids can just go out and buy the physical games like we all did. I don't know. I never bought a game on a digital... Never bought a digital game on the 3DS. All of my games were physical. And I feel like this and the Wii U, the 3DS and the Wii U, are all just kind of, like, in that realm where it's like... I have no sympathy for those people who... Oh, can't buy games and digital things. Like, support your fucking local stores. You know, go go to the GameStop or whatever the fuck. Your I think EB Games Light and just pick up one of these things. Go to a classic <laughs> games, Fallout games, whatever, and just support those guys. You know, I don't know. No, yeah, I I, I feel you on that. Um, as far as just like buying games on, yeah, just get games on disc, whatever. But um. I think the the one thing that someone pointed out to me that I I hadn't considered was now the virtual console is super dead. (laughs) It's like forever. Cause this was like the last, you know, the Wii U had the virtual console and you could like buy your, and now they're really pushing the, 
subscription service. I think that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, yeah. And kind of bad for um, video game preservation, I guess. Um, you just know, because that was a lot. That was kind of the only way to play some of those games now. And yeah. like the only legal way other than spending a, an absorbent amount of money on some like ROMs or whatever uh, to legally buy these games. And for Nintendo, who cares way too much about, you know, their their uh ip and like not letting anyone create emulators online and you know they're blocking fucking youtube videos for posting their soundtracks even though there's nowhere to buy their soundtracks anywhere like nintendo's so fucking weird and you know this is just another step for them to just hide their past and and their content and there's and there's no good way to replace it. And Nintendo doesn't give you an option to because they're not bringing it to the Switch uh, other you know, than the, the the subscription service. I would I would say that that's a bad thing. I would agree with you um, just on paper. That sounds like a bad idea, right? It's it's just like, yeah, on paper, this this seems pretty shitty. But I have in my room right now two Intellivisions an Atari system, two different kinds of Pong, and a Cole- Coleco... Coleco Vision? Coleco Vision in my room. Um, I plugged a couple of those in. Never fucking doing it again. Never fucking doing it again. I will never, ever, ever play anything on those games for any reason. There is no reason... For me to play these games. They are so old and so bad. I mean, I'm sure they were fantastic at the time, but they were just it so dated. And there are so many other things that you I would much rather play than setting this up, plugging into a TV, dealing with all the shit, and then getting to it and you know, spending five minutes doing it. Yeah, I I think it's, with with those old ass systems like uh, you know Atari, ColecoVision, like all that shit. Yeah, those games were old and they they sucked even at the time. Like they were rough to play. I think when you get to the NES though and the SNES, that's when things start to change. That's when you start getting like some classic RPGs, some classic platformers and shit like that. Um, and I, and, I and on top of on top of that, um, even if you don't like playing, it doesn't mean like someone else because you didn't even grow up with those shits. You know, you didn't even grow up with that shit. So like mm-hmm. whatever. But like someone may actually want that. But it's also just the preservation of history. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of books and movies and stuff that are just absolutely today are boring and hard to read. But you want to preserve them for history's sake. Right. Right. Um, and that's and I guarantee you 100% that there is a preservation a lot of, of stuff there isn't that happening like I, you could go you like I said you can go to a mom and pop game shop and they love this kind of shit they get all the all the games for all of that and they will sell you and buy from you these old video games that you can't get online anymore like if yeah. you want to buy it, I guarantee you there is a way for you to buy it. There's n- no way in hell are these Did- <laughs> games going to be like unreachable because we can still get Pong. We can still get the Coleco Vision for Sure, but Pong was one of the was. most successful games of all time. Right? Like one of the most available video games of all time. Like the mm. same is true for the original Mario game, Mario and Duck Hunt, because there were so many of them. Of course, there are a ton of them all over the place. It's more like the smaller games. I I, I often think of uh like Tomba for the PS1, right? If you want to find that game and play that game, you, you got to be willing to spend $2,000. Because is it really that much? Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 hard to find a, a, a classic game sometimes. Or, well, I guess I, maybe Tomba isn't as, uh, yeah. about 50 bucks now. Um, a hundred bucks on eBay. So yeah, I guess, I guess certain, yeah, there's one for 60. 
And I, I agree games, with I agree sure. with you with like ColecoVision and fucking Atari and shit. Like those games are ass because it's like one pixel, two pixels. But when you start getting up there and like NES, SNES, I actually think NES and SNES aged really well because of how they're all the games are like 2D. Some of those early mm-hmm. 3D games are pretty rough now, but there's still some classics on there that. I could see like I want to play that game like and there's no way for me to play that game especially now where people don't you know except for me I've got a, a fucking tube TV back here but like right most people don't own a That's tube TV and there's like no way to play these games so it'd be nice if you just like released your games in a way for me to play them you know that's yeah. the thing and there's always going to be collectors and and stuff like that but yeah I don't know it, it's a complicated conversation but it, I, I get it for the Wii U. Like, they got to close it. I, I just really wish they would have brought the virtual console over to the Switch instead of doing the uh, yep. the subscription service. Because I'd rather just, like, make one purchase of, you know, uh, Ocarina, uh, Ocarina of Time oh, yeah. rather than spending a monthly cost to play Ocarina of Time one time. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. But and, well, and I think they, I think what sorry, I, let me say this and I'll let you go off. Uh, I think what what Xbox is doing is great where they're really trying to add backwards compatibility into their system now. Uh, I wish it's something they thought of a bit sooner, like back with the 360, even if they just started cool. then. And now, you know, with modern consoles like the PS5 is basically just the PS4. You could play all PS4 games and I hope it's that way from now on. Uh, because yeah. man, it's just so nice to be able to play your games <laughs> and yeah. you got to give it to steam as well. And, and, and PC for just being like, you have these games forever and ever and ever mm-hmm. as yeah. things upgrade, your games come with you. Some of them can't really run on your systems anymore, but if you got a system that can run it, there you yeah. go. So, yeah, I agree. I a hundred percent agree, but it's, you know, it takes effort and people and resources to run a a shop an online shop and if they are not getting the money to from that shop to keep it alive then why why do it you no know, yeah i it, get it i get the, it they're, they're bringing it up as a loss and if if i was running a a thing and there are people from like early when i bought like the pizza shop and they're like dude you're this one the one way you make this pizza is fantastic you know and like oh shit okay yeah yeah and then i made a different pizza and people like dude this is way better and it's newer and it's more interesting but those other older people who were with me in the first pizza were just like i'll still buy that and then they start moving away and now i have like two people but like the ingredients are costing more just to keep in stock so that i can i can you know give these two people the pizza that they want and be like no just eat the new shit you know like it's it's costing me a lot of money to keep this up just for you guys like we need we you need to figure something out because it's i get i get what you're saying but sometimes you get a situation where yeah you got you got the the new coke you know you introduce new coke people don't like new coke they want the old coke baby they want to eat they want to drink that old coke oh, and yeah. uh yeah <laughs> no i got the, I the one with the coke in it i get it uh, no i understand but there's times where they're like yo the new coke's good though like but they got just, rid of the new coke you just you know and they went back way. to that's why every wow. coke says classic coca-cola on it now no yeah, but like that was just an example it's just like yo just try it man just stop being stuck in your way and i don't know yeah uh, i don't know i so for me many. we we live in a gener- in a time where there are just too many everything for, like, for- not not even video games just too many everything and we are we are loaded with choice and uh, we don't know what to do with them. And for, I, I for, think... for, for me, it's like if, if Nintendo doesn't want to make these games available in some way or another, then they can't get mad at people for making them available online. That's, I agree. That's I the agree. one thing that really pisses me off. Yeah. It's like, okay, close your shit. It's, it's wasting you money. I get it. Whatever. 
Okay. You don't want to sell them because you don't think people will buy them. You know, that's a statement that PlayStation made back with the PS4. They don't want to make it backwards compatible because no one gives a shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever. That's fine. As long as you're okay with people releasing ROMs online. Yep. Um, Because people like, there are a group of people that like to play classic games. I like playing classic games sometimes. Um, so like if, if it's not available, don't get mad at people for making it available, you know, like it, it like your Absolutely. pizza shop. If the dude mm-hmm. stops selling that kind of pizza and then the yeah. guy, the guy down the street's like, well, I love that pizza. I know the recipe. And he starts selling that kind of pizza. You better I, not get I mad at him for selling that kind of pizza. That. Yeah, exactly. No way. No way. I, I wouldn't. If I was in that situation, I'd be like, good for you, man. You figured it out. But yeah. also, good luck. Because <laughs> I've been selling that pizza for so long and it's cost me. You know, like, yeah, it's it's on you now, I guess. Yeah, there's so many things that are like, yeah, Nintendo's just weird. Anyway, we got one more piece of news here. Uh, one more pe- pizza news? One more pizza news. Nice. Nick is opening a pizza shop. That's, That's it. the news. It's no, called Zoolanders. <laughs> it's called Puzzles. Uh <laughs> Top 10 selling selling video games of January 2022. It's the MPD numbers here. Uh, I love that it it gives me both the list of top 10 selling video games of the month and the best selling games of year to date, even though they're the same because it's just January. It's just January. But yeah, I, so we I, only need to read through this one. Yeah, I appreciate that they gave me both lists, even though they are the same exact list. Anyway, yeah. uh, at number one, no surprise here, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Just Whoa. Abs- absolutely dominated the month. Surprise, surprise. Uh, number two, also no surprise, Call of Duty Vanguard. Just continuing to sell well. Uh, this is probably because it, it came to PC this month. At number three was Monster Hunter Rise, which jumped from 94th the previous month last, to yeah, number three. Month. And I think that is because it came to PC. Well, yeah, uh, there's another one on this list that is the same situation. Yep, in yep. Actually, I'm surprised by that one, too. Uh, at number four is Madden NFL 22. Mm-hmm. At number five, moving from 146 down to number five this month, uh, God of War 2018. And that was because it was released on Steam. I bet you anything. Yep. This, these are all the Steam sales. Yeah. And, may, and probably a little bit of PlayStation sales as well. Yeah, I, I bet that that's the proof is in the pudding right there that if PlayStation just releases these games a few years after they can do the little double dip, little yep, double dip, double dip. It keeps the games alive. Yeah. Like I was saying it. Just... How, how long until we get the last of us on steam? Mm. I don't know. It's gotta be soon. Know. That's, dude. that's a rough one. It's gotta, it's be, gotta soon. be soon. It's a rough one though. You see like... them talking about a remake for the last of us. Why? Yeah. Why, why do that? That game is gorgeous. It's not even that old, right? It's well, 2013. Old. It's almost 10 still, years old. Oh, my God. Still, it's not that old, though. Like, it still holds up. It and, holds up. you know, I'm such a piece of shit, Nick, that I'll complain about it. And when it comes out, I'll play it. Oh, yeah. That's, absolutely. That's 100%. who I am. I'll, I'll do the same. I'll do the same for sure. Be like, why? Why are they releasing it? Oh, shit. It's be gorgeous. I'm going to play it. Yeah. yeah. No, well. Uh, anyway, number six, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. At number seven, FIFA 22. Number eight, Mario Kart 8. At, At number nine, drop down from six. It's just because of Pokemon. Least, but as soon as soon as next month. Oh, it's going to uh, pop up. Two, two months from now, it'll be like Mario Kart 8 all the way up at the top because the, the DLC started releasing. Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if this month, like when we get February's numbers, it's in the top oh, yeah. five That's because yeah, people just got hyped. It. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. went and bought it. Uh, uh, number nine, rainbow six extraction. It's kind of surprising. Yeah. Uh, and number 10 battlefield 2042 drop down from the, from number five to number 10 surprise. Yeah. It's there that's, at all. That's going, yeah, it's going to leave this month for sure. For you sure. See, We've you got see the, uh, games coming out. you see the EA execs. They're like, Oh yeah, it's because Halo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, dude. That's what it is. Not, it's not Halo's fault. That's what it is. <laughs> All right, recent reviews via Open Critic. 
Monarch. What is Monarch? I don't know. I'm the Monarch. I'm monarch. Uh, got a 69 out of 38 critic reviews. So monarch. not great. Not great. Horizon Forbidden West got an 89 from 122 critic reviews. Uh, out of uh, from 45 critic reviews, uh, Total War Warhammer got an 88. Nice. Uh, King of Fighters 15 got an 82 from 68 critic reviews, and Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires <sighs> got a 61. Yeah. From 47 critic reviews. Damn. Damn. Yeah. That's fucked. rough. That's I mean, rough. Nobody, nobody likes Dynasty Warriors anymore. Yeah, they've just been doing the same thing forever yeah. and ever. Uh, next week in games, what to get excited for next week or this week, I guess. This week in games. Uh, <laughs> Destiny 2 The Witch Queen is coming to everything except for the Switch on February 22nd. So get hyped for that. And of course, Elden Ring. We all know. Which Best is coming. place to play Elden Ring, Jake, go. Twitch.tv. Twitch. No, the Switch. Oh. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Not watch Elden Ring. Oh, oh I misheard you. I misheard you. play Elden Ring. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Elden Not Ring, it's coming to everything, including the Switch. Could you imagine? <laughs> Could, Could you imagine? imagine? I'd not be hyped for this game it if it was coming it to the Switch. Yeah, no way. Yeah, February 25th. February 25th. Yeah. Which is Thursday. Friday. It is Friday. I don't know if I can think it says Thursday. I gotta switch that. Um. Yeah. I wonder if they'll do a midnight or like a like a nine o'clock. I'll have to ask the the old GameStop uh, if they're doing a midnight thing. Are you gonna sit in line for that? I, I mean, I've already pre-ordered it. So like, uh, Might as well. they don't really do like real midnights anymore. They just like no. give you a number and then you come in or whatever. They just they just hand it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, there you go. Yeah. Why not do it like that? It's stupid to do yeah. it any other way. Um, yeah, excited for that. But yeah, come over to twitch.tv slash lonercast on maybe Thursday if I get it Thursday night. If not, I'll maybe play it for a bit on Friday night. Um, uh, yeah, check us out twitch.tv slash lonercast. Um, of course, we do this show every Monday at 3 30. Uh, I also been playing Horizon, I'll be playing that on Wednesday, so I might play it tonight as well. Uh, but yeah, twitch.tv slash lonercast. Uh, check out Nick on twitch.tv slash fatal underscore microwave if he ever streams again. Uh, check us out on Twitter. Never. Never. At, at LonerCast1 is the channel's Twitter. Uh, I am at emergency pizza underscore and Nick is at fatal underscore microwave. Uh, and make sure you check out the other shows and the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel, baby. Uh, we got content coming out like crazy. Um, and uh, yeah. Nick, final words. Uh, don't touch your mother inappropriately. She will call the cops. It's true. She probably would. Un unless she's like one of those cool mothers. 